Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of The Fibroid Doc. Today we're going to continue our series on fibroids in pregnancy. Did you know that 10 to 20 percent of women who have fibroids in, during pregnancy actually develop symptoms? Which means 80 percent actually do fine. They go through pregnancy without any issues related to their fibroids but up to 10 to 20% will actually have complications from their fibroids. And last week, we talked about three such complications. And today we're gonna delve into them a little bit deeper and um, really look into what each of those complications mean for pregnant women. So to refresh, last week we talked about preterm contractions and preterm labor. We talked about growth restriction and we talked about obstructed labor. So let's look at the first one, um, preterm contractions. Now, this can be very scary, right? Um, you you wanna deliver your baby at term, which is 37 weeks. So if you start contracting before then, it's a little bit scary. Um, women are often wondering, oh no, am I going to deliver this baby ahead of time? What does that mean? Is my baby gonna go to NICU? So it's kind of a scary thing. And I know this firsthand because my second baby was delivered a little bit preterm. Um, anyway, during um, pregnancy, you know, if you have fibroids, one of the complications that can happen um, is degeneration of the fibroids or the fibroid sort of dying off because it's losing its blood supply. And this can cause severe preterm contractions. And sometimes if the contractions are persistent enough, it can actually cause labor. Um, so what happens if, you know, you, you go through that, you pretty much go into the hospital to make sure you're not really in labor, you're going to get examined, um, and make sure that your cervix is not changing, um, that labor is actually not, you know, happening. And this is truly just preterm contractions. And once they determine that, um, then you often will get some pain medication and you'll also get a medication to help relax your uterus and kind of stop these contractions and quiet things down. Um, you'll often take this medication for about 48 hours until the contractions slow down, you're feeling better, um, and often uh, women are hospitalized during this time because the pain is so severe, they're nervous, um, you know, in case this happens again at home. So they are kind of kept in the hospital for a couple of days um, and um, about 48 hours later, they're discharged and um, women are often just hoping this does not happen to them again during the pregnancy. So if you have fibroids and you're pregnant and you are experiencing, you know, degeneration of the fibroids, this is something you can expect a short hospital stay, some medication, um, and including some pain relief. Okay. The second point we looked at growth restriction, right? So if a fibroid grows really large during pregnancy, um, then the baby often doesn't have enough place to grow. So if you are somebody with fibroids and you're pregnant, you can expect to pretty much get an ultrasound every single month, okay? Um, to really ensure that the baby is growing adequately. This is especially important in the third trimester as the baby is getting much larger um, and you wanna make sure that the fibroids are not obstructing um, the growth of the baby. And you know, if it is, then your physician will speak with you about you know, possible early delivery um, if the baby truly has stopped growing. So you can expect to get plenty of ultrasounds during the pregnancy. You also may meet with somebody called a maternal fetal medicine specialist. And these are doctors who are OBGYNs who've done additional training in complications of pregnancy and high risk pregnancies. And we'll be talking to one such doctor in just a couple of weeks. Um, but if you're somebody with fibroids in pregnancy and you're having issues with the baby growing, you will likely meet with a maternal fetal medicine specialist. Okay. And the last point, uh, we talked about obstructed labor. So what does that mean? Um, you know, if you have a large fibroid that's sitting right by your cervix, um, oftentimes it's just not going to let the baby pass through the birthing canal. Um, irrespective of how much your uterus contracts, this baby is just not going to fit. So that's one form of obstructed labor. 
The second form is if you've got a bunch of fibroids, maybe two, maybe three, they may not even be that big, but if they're all in the wall of the uterus, the muscle of the uterus is just not gonna effectively contract. And so the uterus is made of smooth muscle. And if uh, there are fibroids that are studying the uterine wall, it's just not gonna be able to um, compress and contract as efficiently as it should in order to push the baby down the birth canal. And so what does this mean? This means that you, know, you could be having a long labor um, and uh, just, a, just a longer labor than expected, you know, can go on for a couple of days sometimes. You may need additional medication to help the uterus contract. And it could also mean that, you know, you do all these things and the baby still is not able to pass through or the uterus is not contracting well enough. It could mean that you end up with a cesarean section in order to deliver your baby. Okay, so these are the three main ways in which fibroids can affect pregnancy. Again, this is 10 to 20% of women with fibroids um, who are pregnant will actually experience some of these complications. The first one is preterm contractions and labor. The second one is growth restriction. And the last one is obstructed labor. And hopefully you've gotten a little bit, bit more information about what each of these means. Um, and what you can expect if you are a pregnant woman with fibroids, okay? And um, you hopefully you will be one of the 80%, uh, you'll fall into the 80% category where you may have fibroids but zero complications. And that is the majority of women. So I don't want you to think that, oh no, I have fibroids and I'm gonna you know end up with one of these complications. Remember that 80% don't have any complications during pregnancy from their fibroids. Um, so hopefully you'll just sail through and it won't be a problem. Okay, and really quick, I just wanna mention one other thing because patients ask me this all the time. If you are going to have a C-section, can you remove my fibroids at the same time? And the answer is typically not, okay? There's a lot of blood supply to the uterus during pregnancy and during a C-section, we're focused more on just getting the baby out and just having a healthy delivery. So at that point, um, we don't do any extra things like remove um, fibroids. So that is another surgery when all the hormones go down, where the blood supply to the uterus really calms down. Um, then you'll talk to your doctor about scheduling a separate surgery called a myomectomy to actually remove those fibroids, okay? Take care, everybody. Um, please comment if you have any questions or um, any, any comments about this episode or if you want to hear about other topics um, on fibroids, please let me know. Thank you, bye.